Today, I thought I would drop something a little different for the channel. It's not my face on camera, I truly hate that. But instead, I figured I would introduce somebody else to lay down some of their quick tips. You see, I play host to a Unity Developers Meetup group here in Southern California. And these groups are all over the place. If you're interested, try dropping a search for your local group. You might find it just down the road. Now, at these events, I host some great guest speakers. And this time around, I had Mark Schenagel, a technical manager from Unity, diving into the new graphics performance tools for Unity 6. So I unpacked the camera and the mic. And before we got started with the event, I asked him to unpack his favorite optimization tools just for the channel. Okay, let's jump straight in, Mark. What's tip number one? All right, what is tip number one? So right now we are inside the new Fantasy Kingdom project. Uh, this is available for download today on the Asset Store, 100% for free. And uh, yeah, we're gonna show you three really cool um, uh, performance boosts here that are literally just check boxes. So the first one, check this out. On screen right now, I've got 3.1 million triangles, uh, 3.9 million vertices, uh, 1,600 batches. I'm going to go and turn on the GPU resident drawer. I'm gonna go from disabled, turn that on, and pay attention to the number of batches right here. Boop, we just lost nice. a third of our batches. Um, GPU occlusion calling was turned on. I'm gonna turn that off. Uh, again, we've got 3.1 million triangles, 3.9 million vertices. I've turned on GPU occlusion culling, and check that out. We just went from 1.4, or from 3.1 to 1.4. So literally cut down the number of uh, triangles and vertices that we're actually drawing. Uh, by using GPU occlusion culling. So what is that? Uh, a really easy way to see that is to just go into your rendering debugger, turn on your test overlay, and I'm gonna leave the game view and just go into the scene view real quick. And if we look now, this is actually a debug mode that allows us to see with this heat map where the most polygons are being removed. So there's a bunch of stuff behind here, which, well, which is why we see that purple. Um, this, I mean, it's more just for visual fun, but I love this kind of stuff. Uh, it just lets me see that there's a whole bunch of objects back there that just aren't being drawn right now. They're just simply in real time occluded, so we don't have to, uh, to deal with them. So that's the resident drawer and the GPU occlusion culling. The other one is the uh, spatial temporal post-processing. So here into my quality settings, gonna go, sorry, not that one, gonna go here to my upscale filter and turn on spatial temporal post-processing and nothing changed, so why? Well, check this out. I'm gonna go back to my game view. Let's turn off our stats, and we're gonna go here to material, and where is it at here? Oh, wait a minute, it's on rendering, sorry. Let's turn on this guy right here. So rendering debug, rendering, turn on STP, and what this is showing me is this black window here represents the entire frame that we're rendering. So here it's 1920 by 1080. Uh, what this is showing me is that I am only rendering 50% of the pixels. So we're rendering this and then we're upscaling it to 1080p. Nice. So I can visually see exactly how much. Now look at the look at the scene view here. It still looks beautiful. There's no shimmering, there's no, you know, if I get this down to like 0.1, yeah, I can now see some noise, I can see some artifacting, but we're only rendering that little tiny 0.18% of the entire frame and then upscaling it back up. So you know, on, a, on an older device, uh, like something like this on an iPhone 6, this entire scene still renders beautifully um, using this new STP. I've seen a lot of great comments uh, on the forums and on Reddit about just uh, just how much people like these tools. So those are three really good tips. Uh, I don't know why you wouldn't implement them. Uh, you know, with the with the quality settings I showed you at the beginning, you could say for a low-end phone, we're at 0.3, for a mid-tier phone, we're at 0.5, and maybe a high-end phone, we're at 0.7, but in the testing I've done, 0.7 is like pixel perfect to 1.0. So uh, just three crazy out of the box features that uh, should get you improved frame rates and uh, lower CPU uh, heat and just all around better stuff. Thank you, Mark. There you That's go. That's excellent. Thank There's you. Three tips for you <laughs> to take home and implement. Nothing like a checkbox to just make stuff faster. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys.